Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in the Pico series. In this video I'm not going to be doing any programming, it's purely about something called the GPIO. When people get introduced to microcontrollers, for whatever reason they seem to think that it's all about programming, like you're going to sit at a PC and you're going to do some programming to make the microcontroller do something. But what they forget is that a microcontroller has a purpose and it's often not to do with software at all, it's often to interface to some hardware. So for example, the actual book, by the way I'm, I'm following this book here, which is a really good book. Uh, I got this given to me from um, a Raspberry Pi organisation. Um, yeah, they, they forget that the whole idea of microcontrollers is usually to interface to some hardware. So the book actually says about uh, traffic lights. So it says that a microcontroller could control traffic lights. So it, it may get some input from a sensor or it might just be a time based thing. It might just say right okay we've got three traffic lights. We want this, this one here, traffic light one, to be red now and then it makes another traffic light green. Uh, it probably makes the other one red. Or you know, and then it might switch them around. Right now, you're green, and these two are red. This one's amber for a second, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so the book also says about a washing machine. It says you choose a program, and that determines how long you wash for. It determines the heat of the water. It determines how many spins it has. Maybe the speed of the spin, and stuff like that. So you so the microcontroller get some input from somewhere and it makes some decisions based on that and then it outputs it to something else. Usually that's the way it goes. The, thir the first thing that came to my mind when I started reading this was um, a really simple electromagnetic lock like that. So you see these in hospitals and in banks and some shops and things. So you usually have a button on the wall and you press the button <coughs> and it opens or it releases the lock but by default it's locked as soon as the door shuts the electromagnetic lock clamps the door shut so yeah when the button is pressed it doesn't actually power anything it sends a signal over to the microcontroller and the microcontroller is like hey somebody wants us to, to let go of the lock let's let go and then they can push it open um, but there might be a situation in a bank or something where, where the um, where the switch is, is is cut off. So somebody inside might turn the outside switch off. So when somebody presses it, it has no effect whatsoever. Anyway, so that's a, a, a typical sort of thing that you could use a microcontroller for. Um, going back to this, so there's a few examples about um, you know the ways you can use a microcontroller. And they all boil down to one essential part of the microcontroller, and that's called the GPIO. Okay, so let's talk more about these pins now and uh, what they do. So, pins. The GPIO uses pins, and the GPIO essentially uses pretty much every pin um, on the board. So here are the pins, which I'm sure you've seen before. So I've soldered mine in a previous video so that I can access the pins, so that I can make use of the GPIO. But each of these pins have some sort of special purpose. And we will start with, um, let's start with the colour bands here. So they're all marked with a colour, you know, a colour. Each pin has a colour. So we'll start with the green ones, the light green ones. So the light green ones over here say, GPIO, PIO and PWM. I'm not going to talk about PIO, but GPIO means a general purpose input and output. What it means is just generally speaking it can be used as an input or an output. When we're talking about being used as an input and output it means from a digital point of view. So it can accept either a high or a low as an input by default. So you could say to something, I'm going to use this as an output port, here you go, I'm going to output high. So there's some logic in the code that says if such and such, output high. Get pin number, I don't know, let's say GP27, and let's say it's high. 
And then some other device on the other side can say, oh right, such as the Raspberry Pi says it's high, okay, let's do this. Or it could say low. Um, so that's GPIO. So all of the pins with a, a light green uh, marking here can be used as uh, that sort of thing, GPIO. PWM is pulse width modulation, but I'll tell you more about that in, an, in another video anyway. But then, yeah, PWM, if you want to research more, it's called PWM. What else have we got here? So we're, we've got um, PINK. PINK is um, SPI, which stands for Serial Preferral Interface. And it's an interface that's been designed by, I think, a few companies. I can't remember the, the exact details. And it's a way to standardize the way that some devices communicate with each other and microcontrollers. Serial peripheral interface. So with SPI, you have a serial clock, uh, you have a TX and an RX, and you have something called chip select. Again, more on that later. It's not necessary to know about that at the moment. But what you need to know is it's, the, it's a four pin um, protocol which allows you to communicate with different devices. SPI is very common. I2C or some people call it I squared C, which is the light blue one. Again, it's another protocol made by a few companies again. And um, it does the same as SPI, but it does it in a different way. And both SPI and I squared C or I2C have different advantages and disadvantages. And again, it's not really in the scope of this video. It gets quite advanced. And probably a lot of you won't even need that anyway. Right? The next one is the um, purple colored ones. So these are called UART, which is Universal Asynchronous Receiver and Transmitter. I might have to put a comment if I'm wrong there. Um, and these are also, this is also a communication protocol, but this is a very lightweight one. Uh, it's basically just a serial communication protocol. It's really simple and you can use it as a universal way to communicate with pretty much any microcontroller but it doesn't have the capabilities that the other two have which is um, ability, ability to address you know, certain devices and stuff like that. It's, it's a very lightweight protocol. What else have we got here? So we've got right, so we've got the red ones. VBUS VSYS and 3.3 volts out. So I'm actually I'm actually using this book here which has been given to me by Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, that's what these videos are based off. And for these three, I'm just going to read out what it says here because they put it much better than, than I could. So we'll start with VSYS. So you give VSYS 2 to 5 volts of power and it says a pin directly connected to your Pico's internal power supply which cannot be switched off without also switching the Pico off. So basically this is like a raw input to the Pico and it can do one or two different things with it um, not restricted to just powering the Pico itself. Right so we'll go to the um, let's go to VBUS next. So VBUS is 5 volts of power a source of 5 volts power taken from your Pico, Pico's micro USB port and used to power hardware which needs more than 3.3 volts. So it could be used to power uh, something else basically. The next one, 3.3 volts out it says. A source of 3.3 volts power, same voltage your Pico runs at internally generated from the VSYS input. This power supply can be switched on or off using the V3 point sorry the 3 V3EN pin above it, which also switches your Pico off. Right? And um, ground, well ground is quite an easy one. So ground is used to um, oh by the way, the red pins, there'll be more on that uh, there'll be more on that soon. I'll need to cover that in a bit more depth. Going to the black ground pins, ground is used to complete a circuit to ground uh, in order to make something run and ground is also a reference point as well or helps to make a reference point a way to measure voltage 
So for example, I'm 1.8 meters, but if, if you weren't aware that, you know, I was measuring it from the ground, it wouldn't make much sense. So, I mean, what does it mean I'm 1.8 meters? It means I'm 1.8 meters from the ground, yeah? I mean, and basically this performs calculations based on voltage on the same way, and in the same, in the exact same way. So 3.3 volts in comparison to what? Well, in comparison to ground. And basically ground helps to form, uh, you know, that, that basis. And what else have we got here? So we've got the run pin and the enable pin. So the enable pin is, is basically, like you said before, to enable the uh, that 3.3 volt line. Uh, let me just read again what it says. It says, power supply can be switched on and off using the 3V3EN pin above it, which also switches your Pico off, okay? And finally, the run pin, um, so it says, the run header is used to start and stop your Pico from another microcontroller, okay? So you can turn your microcontroller off via that pin from some other device. Again, it's out of the scope of this video. Um, I'll talk about that another time. And there's one last thing to go through, and that is the ADC VREF, ADC2, a ground, ADC1, and ADC0. I'm not gonna go into detail with the exact pins, but ADC is analog to digital converter. So let's say you have um, a voltage of five volts, you know like these digital pins, a voltage of five volts, well I should say 3.3 volts actually, would be considered to be a high input, and zero volts would be considered to be a low input. So it could say, is it high or is it low? But there are some situations where you might not want to, to say it's high or low, you might, want to, you might want a broad range of values. You might want to say, for example, this is half, this is uh, two thirds, this is, you know, this is 700 out of 1024. Basically, you might not want a high and a low. You might want a way of um, being able to input a range of values. And that's what the ADC does. So it gets a value between, let's say, 0 volts to 3.3 volts, and it converts it into a, into a range. Let, let's say, for, for easiness sake, 0 to 1024. And, and you can read or determine from that number um, a range of values instead of digital, high or low. And that's what that does. Um, okay, so I'm going to end the video on that. Hopefully this has been uh, useful to you. I don't think I've missed anything. Oh yeah, so there's SW clock, ground, SWDIO. They're to do with debugging, which I'm not going to be doing. I don't think that it will get done in this book at all, although I could be wrong. Um, okay, so thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon. Bye.